Welcome to Single Parent Success Stories, a podcast designed to inspire single parents. Here you'll find resources from self-care to finances to parenting and everything in between. Discover what it takes to thrive. Let the stories inspire you to what is possible. Hello and welcome to Single Parent Success Stories. Today's guest is Samantha Lander. She is a functional diagnostic practitioner, NASM certified personal trainer and Czech holistic lifestyle coach. She works with a diverse range of clients and is passionate about helping people of all ages and abilities achieve their health and wellness goals. She's a single mom of one joining us from St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome, Samantha. It is a pleasure to have you. Oh, I'm excited to be on. Yeah, awesome. So please uh, share with us your story. How did you become a single parent? Um, Conscious uh, decision or an accident or... No, I was married. Um, I got married and, um, you know, I saw a lot of the red flags, I'm sure. But, you know, I, I think that I just, well... I'd probably been in a fair amount of traumatic relationships before that. So I thought it was so much better than the others. And there's a lot of vulnerability and with my ex and he was very open and kind in the beginning, but slowly things definitely changed. And he was a lot older and I don't believe that he necessarily wanted to have a kid maybe, but um, when I made the decision to have a divorce, there were some things that I knew would be really unhealthy for me Mm long-term and I had to protect my son. I didn't want my kid to see us fighting and grow up in that kind of environment. Um, you you know, and and we did a lot of work. Um, we went to a lot of therapy. He did a lot of therapy. I did a lot of therapy. I mean, we put the work in, but it was work that needed to be continued and a lot of it at all times. And, um, that didn't happen, I would say. <laughs> so uh, then I would get a little bit of, sorry, my dog is digging. Hey, sure. Then I would get a lot of, then I would get a lot of, um, I lost my train of thought when he did that. I uh, I got a lot of time alone away from him when we were separated and it, life was easier. Things were easier knowing that I just had the full responsibility of taking care of my child and no expectation that anyone else was going to help me was easier. And every time he would reintegrate and we try, it would just be, it's like my soul was slowly being ripped out of me. And I felt like I was walking around with 800 pounds on my back at all times. Well, so, yeah, that's how I became, I, I guess, you know, a marriage that didn't work out. You know, it takes two. I mean, we both play a role, but... Yeah, yeah, because we, we all bring our own set of beliefs and ideas about partnership and expectations. I think uh, the biggest thing is expectations that we place on other people. And then we become entangled in it. There is a, a great book, uh, I think it's Don Ruiz, to not to not expect, like, let go of expectations. Is it, didn't he do the four agreements too? Yeah, 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 four agreements. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, create agreements instead of expectations because then it's not personal it is an agreement that didn't work out and nothing to do with our relationship we still can be friends let's change our agreement because agreement was not working it's funny because i literally just said that to him this morning i was like this is a business arrangement and it's about our child i was like don't make it about me do what's best for your son and it's just like will not happen (laughs) but if you could go back in time, would you do anything differently? In life? About your situation, but where you are, uh, single parenting. I, I would have listened to my gut and not all the external things of people telling me he's great or, you know, I, I definitely would have just, I'm learning to really pick up on those red flags and not go with my emotions mm-hmm. and go with, what what is right like what what will be right like the, the logical thinking the the long term how that will impact my health long term because 
I, uh, the intellect is where like I, I can get the situation. I can intellectually be like, Oh, this is, you know, I can, I can put things together, but when my emotions are in it, it's, um, it's so much harder, you know, when your heart's in it. And I was really vulnerable. I, I had just gotten out of prison. I just gotten out of a, I had a, a fairly healthy relationship, but just, we were just not right for each other prior to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just felt like that was the next best thing. He was the best, best thing. And, and my heart was completely like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> True, true. Or maybe I didn't. Just, I did. I I've never had better. Possibly, you know. I didn't know that there is better out there, and there are people that can treat you a certain way, and there are healthier relationships, or, or maybe they're not. I don't know. I still haven't found one. How were you growing up? What was your childhood like? Um, my childhood growing up looked perfect on paper. So everything seemed like it was, you know, this happy little family. We were, you know, cute little kids. My mom is beautiful. But there, now that I'm doing so much therapy, there is a lot of emotional trauma that I, like, witnessed, that I went through. It, you know, a lot of abandonment, a lot of watching my parents fighting and that was part of my big thing, but they also have 50 years together still. It, I don't know. If, I don't, it works for them. Okay. You know what I mean? But so I, there was not a lot of like, none of my friend, my parents' friends are divorced. There's like not a lot of divorce and around me. And so, you know, stick it out, stick it out, stick it out was where I was for a long time from my parents. And I, I've learned that I really just need to go with my own thinking and not so much follow what my parents say just because they're my parents doesn't mean I have to listen to everything they say and I'm a lot healthier when I'm and I feel better when I can just make the decisions on my own for what I'm going to do but you know just a lot of emotional trauma and I think people you know put that at the wayside and I think it's not well you weren't raised by an alcoholic who was abusive and this, but it is another form of like abuse. And it is, it's almost like a a sneakier because you think you're okay, you know, going out about your life and you think there's been no trauma and you think everything's fine. So look good on paper. No one was shooting anyone or, you know, shooting up drugs in your living room or beating the crap out of, you know? And so, I mean, I think that it's a serious thing, you know, it definitely impacts a lot of people and it doesn't matter if everyone's trauma is different. That's just, right. I think, yeah. And I just kind of like, I'm not, I'm in recovery and I, everybody's rock bottom is also different. I feel, you know, it's, you don't have to be homeless living out of a car. I sure wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's something you need to take into consideration. I'm not, I think I internalized it. I'll beat myself up over it for a long time. I didn't understand it. So you're right. I think emotional uh, abuse or emotional trauma is like a silent killer. You mm-hmm. don't see it visually because yeah. visually on the outside everything looks perfect, but yeah. what That's is true. happening on the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. And I do all the self care. That's what I do for a living, you know? Yeah. yeah. I do all the external. I do, but like this year, I was like, I can't, I want to grow. Like, I need to do the emotional work. And um, that's what I'm doing, you know, and it hurts and it's sad. It's, it's happy. It's, it's all over, but it feels good. At, once you get through like the pain, you know, and the grieving, it, it's good to go through it. And it's hard. I, it's uncomfortable, but it's okay. Kind of having one of those days today. I just, we saw when we first got on the podcast, <laughs> but you know, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm allowing myself that space to be vulnerable and to, talk to who I need to talk to being a single mom is not easy <laughs> so no, no what was your single parent journey like what were str- uh, did you face any struggles challenges or I know you said like you know when you were on your own you felt you felt like you can make you can take a better it's better control. it is better but so when I started well once I was a single parent 
and my my ex husband would take the kid. There was a lot of lying about who was with my child, where he was, not answering the phone, not communicating, not co parenting. And this goes in like these cycles where it will be okay and then not and then okay. But for a long time, it was like I really disconnected from my child. Mm-hmm. And and then I would reconnect. But then eventually, like the disconnect got greater and greater because we ended up going 50-50 at one point. And, it, and, it, and COVID by the, was like the best thing that could happen because I knew we couldn't get sitters. And right. like, you know, but I never knew who was with my baby. Like I never, and they didn't have my number. Um, he would lie about it. And, you know, I'd postpartum. Like, I mean, it just was so emotionally, like, hard for me. And that's when I started drinking again. Because I couldn't, I just had to numb it. Like, I couldn't process it. Mm-hmm. And that cycle went on and off and on and off. And... I think I was going through the motions of being a parent for a long time and not being able to connect with my son. And then at three and a half, but he was the easiest kid. So it was very easy. It was, it was easy taking care of him three and a half, not so easy. Um, A lot of behavior stuff started like hitting and hitting kids at school, getting kicked out of daycares. You would, he's not like, it's just a lot of really defiant behavior to any authority figure Mm -hmm. and the ADHD we got tested, but I knew there was sort of more and we've been just battling this and trying to figure it out. My ex just thinks he's normal. It's fine. So I think that's hard is like the co-parenting on the mental health aspect of trying to help my child now. Like he need, like, I know there's so many labels that get thrown out with kids, like uh, so many, but it's very clear that something is not right, but my ex doesn't see it my kid acts out with me and everyone else. Like he just doesn't do it with him. And I don't know what goes on there. You know, I have no idea. I have to accept that acceptance is what I'm really kind of working on today, but he just recently got diagnosed with ODD and ADHD. Um, And as you know, like I'm a functional health practitioner. So this is a challenge. I was in like denial I like ODD is a like it defines my child completely. He's the sweetest little thing in the world. And I don't want to label him at all, but like he really does have like the most defiant behavior. It's called oppositional defiant disorder. And it's when like basically you say no to this child and they flip out, but it's not his, it's not him just being a punk. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't get it. Like, why don't you get it? Right. You know, you're talking, trying to explain, I've tried every method. I, you know, Mm -hmm. therapy, you name it. And I finally like have an answer. It's literally happened this week. But what's the answer? Well, that he has the ODD. Okay. I mean, his behavior is like, so it's just argumentative with everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. So it's really hard. Like when you're dealing with a child, like it's a lonely place. Like, I don't know if anybody, I'm sure somebody listening has dealt with a child who has, I wouldn't say mental illness, but like, you know, just troubled just, but it's, it's not his fault now. I know. And he doesn't just have an attitude problem. And now I know I have to restructure my parenting. So that'll be the next challenge, which will be interesting. But I, I have a plan, you know, it's good when you have a plan and you know what's going on. I just was like flying by the seat of my plant pants with them. I didn't know what I was going to get. I couldn't take them anywhere. I couldn't. And then, so, and then we'd have like the summer was great. And then mm-hmm. we're back. To, he went back to school. And then like last weekend was awful. So those little guys keep you on your toes. <laughs> yes. Children are our greatest teachers and they're mirrors showing to us what we still have inside of us that we still unloved part of ourselves how we interact with ourselves and how we relate to things this is what they're showing us by triggering us by having the defined behavior and it's not to say you know you're a bad person or i'm a bad person it's just we still have work to do on ourselves once we change that relationship that we have then the children are gonna change how they relate to us yeah oh yeah I mean, it's, it's parenting. I got to change a lot for sure. Um, I mean, I have a whole list of like my plan, which I'm good with, but you know, it's, it's, 
I'm excited to like see him today. I haven't seen him and like trying to like, now I have a new approach and I can be more empathetic towards him. I mean, I just thought he was being mean. I just thought he was mean, like well, just angry. Like, how is this with little kid so angry? <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't make sense to me, you know? And like every form of delicious. And I'm very like, when I say no, it's a hard no, because otherwise you take advantage of it and you get mean, but it's like, you cannot say no to this kid. You just have to, I mean, you can, you just have to find a way to do it. Mm-hmm. and I, I i i pray a lot on and i see people who are like soft parents like super loving and like yeah and i'm like man i wish so this is the funny thing is like from what you said is like i was talking to my sponsor and, and aa and i was like you know my higher power definitely has jokes because i was literally praying to be taught how I can be like a softer, more kind parent because I'm not, I'm like very like hard. And then I'm like, okay, like here, this is the joke. Cause like now my kid has ODD and I literally have to like be a soft parent to get anywhere with him. I'm like, okay, this is how I'm going to learn. <laughs> it's not like just like some little lesson. I literally got to get hit over the head with a bat, you know? Yeah. It's all right. I think that personally I am too soft. I got to find that balance. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can come hang with my child. <laughs> yeah, but I totally get you, you know, with labels and everything. Uh, I was going through the same thing when uh, my daughter was growing up and my spouse at the time didn't see anything wrong. <laughs> I was, so oh, he, he just told me this morning he refuses to co-parent. There's no reason he should have. He had, it's my house, your house my parenting, your parenting. And I'm like, can you imagine if you had like two separate lives as a six year old? I mean, I felt like I had three separate lives when I was dealing with our divorce and that was hard for me. And I'm 42. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I can recommend something. I met another guest. Uh, her name is Fiona Conk and what she did, she created a co-parenting journal. It's for the kid to travel with the journal between two houses, kind of for the kid to have, even though the parents are not together, but having that sense of connection through the journal. So you know how he's feeling, what he's eating. He's six. He's not going to be writing in a journal. No, I know. I'm saying you fill it out with them. So you fill oh, okay. it out once he's with you and then with when he's oh, he won't. My <laughs> he won't do anything. I can't ask him to do anything. I'm done. I'm done. I have to accept <laughs> it. You're asking me that what that is like, if I can get him to answer a text about soccer, we're good. <laughs> okay maybe maybe one day we'll get there okay he wants the easy jobs he doesn't want to be a part of it and then screams at me for me not having him be a part of it so <laughs> what do you think is the most important trait to instill in the child um a really good moral compass you know to be kind be respectful accountability humble egoless selfless Mm-hmm. put others before you which seems like my kid is an absolute brat and can't do any of that but I, he can he's just it's literally no I know it's so crazy there's like a disorder where you literally just are defiant with any authoritative figure especially adult it's crazy it's just all I'm just mind-blowing but what about you are you like that with figures of authority no if I get in trouble, I'm I'm very apologetic and very, you know, yeah, I don't fight back like that. I know when I'm in trouble, I shut my mouth. I've been in a lot of trouble. And I, I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm like, was I? I mean, I am, I'm very hard headed and I'm a lot like him. Like a lot of the, you know, I don't love to be told no, but I also like will respect the rules and authority figures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, all right. What kind of advice can you share with single parents who are just became a single parent? Oh, don't play, don't be a victim. Don't play the martyr. Don't get, you'll waste so much energy and time that needs, and I'm, I'm not perfect. I was probably doing it earlier this week, but like you'll waste so much time and energy that could be spent towards making more money time with your kid working on self-care if you just sit there and want to 
feel sorry for yourself. Like nobody's single parenting situation is great. I don't know many that are great. I mean, as far as like, there's always going to be something you can feel bad about or, and like, don't beat yourself up. It happened. You have an opportunity to make the best of it. Kids are resilient. Um, I, I know a lot of kids that come out great um, from divorce and from a lot of trauma. And there's a lot of resources out there that are grant funded. Um, it takes work <laughs> to find them, but just ask people. I bet like two out of four parents are struggling with something with their children, even if they're not divorced. So. Yeah. You're right. How did your life change as a result of single parenting? Did you discover new opportunities? Uh, oh, my life career, is so better. Your life? My, my job you? is better. My career is going like awesome. Um, I got my recovery back. Like I, it's, it took a minute, but like things are really good. Like I'm, I'm back to like my old self um, and doing like lots of service work and just really cool shit. Like that I, I wasn't doing, I was swallowed up by a marriage and living under a rock and not growing. I was like dying inside, mm -hmm. not stimulated by anything around me going through the motions so, mm -hmm. and now I'm single and like, I can go do whatever the fuck I want when I want to do it. For the most part, when I don't have my kid, I have the opportunity to be the best parent when I have my child. It's been hard, but now I have a new plan. <laughs> but Nice, nice. What helped you, you know, on time, in your journey? Time, sobriety, therapy, meetings, talking to people. Mm-hmm. Doing all the work. A lot of work. Yeah. What would you say is your superpower? Um, I'm not I'm not I wouldn't say it like this. I don't know how to say it. I, I'm I I dream big. I can visualize something and I don't see the failure in it. I just see that it's achievable and then I just sort of like start doing it. Um and I have a lot of ideas. I'm an idea person. So like if I, I have a lot of ideas about a lot of things, very creative in that way, um, I would say. I think that's amazing. That's incredible. Because <laughs> we always kind of, well, I don't want to generalize, but <laughs> a lot of people when they have an idea, oh, what if it could go wrong? What 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 if something would happen? But oh, yeah. you imagine it's gonna it's gonna happen and it's gonna be. I don't even try because they're scared they're gonna just fail, and I just think I kind of just do it. Yeah, I, I mean, if someone says no, well, that's not gonna happen, then I'll move on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. nice, nice. So how how do you help people now? Um, so I work with a lot of women. I um, I help them identify the root cause of why they not be might not be like getting the results in their health and wellness kind of world. So, for example, I have a lot of women who are working out, eating right, and they feel worse. They're not getting any results. They're counting calories. They're going to the gym. They're doing all the things but they're not getting any better. Um, a lot of hormone imbalances, gut, a lot of people with bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, anything GI related. Um, a lot of women come to me or like, I'm bloated when I wake up. It's like I've eaten Thanksgiving dinner the day I got up. It's, you know, and mm -hmm. so I get a lot of that. Um, so that I help women figure out the root cause. I use specialty lab testing, so functional labs. So I do run labs on people and then we come up with protocols and plans and put that all into place. And, um, it seems to work. I've been, I've been doing it for 20 years. So nice, nice. And to go, you know, I don't band-aid things with a bunch of medication. So very holistic approach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe in holistic approach as well. Because all those medications, they're just bandages. Don't, oh, don't yeah. solve the real problem. Just cover up oh, yeah. 100%. the symptoms. <laughs> if you could uh, 
When you were growing up, did you have a hero growing up? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know I really wanted my brother. I thought my brother was like the coolest thing in the world. Um, but I don't know that I had a hero. I don't know. I, you know, I don't think I did. That's right. I've never, I don't know that I did. I can't, I wasn't like one of, yeah. You mean like someone being like, oh, Spider-Man or. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. I know. I, I, I don't recall that I had one. Not necessarily. There are, people I were drawn, there are people I were draw, I was drawn to, mm -hmm. and I may have wanted what they had, so I would do, you know, be inspired to be, you know, someone was really good at one, like some art thing, I'd be like, oh, I want to be like them. Someone could sing, oh, maybe that, but not like a soul, like I want to have a legacy just like that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no worries. Yeah, uh, we, we are all different and some people have that role model or figure or somebody you wanted to be like and some people don't. You know, it, it, there is no, nothing wrong with that. Just, uh, yeah. So what is next for you? Um, Any fun projects you're working on that you like to share? Oh my gosh, I'm like working on a book. I just got published in a local magazine. Um there's talks of maybe doing a documentary. Um, I mean, that's a whole other bit of my life. We kind of don't, it's too much to probably get into. But, um, and then just, you know, growing my business. Just, I want to grow. I want to help as many people as I can. Public speaking's on the list, more of that. Um, but right now my focus is my kid. My kid and my, what kind of my work right now. Um, I do a lot of influencer stuff on social media too. So mm -hmm. it's a lot, there's a lot in the works for sure that's good awesome awesome is there anything i haven't asked that you'd like to share no if you're a single parent you know embrace it try to look at the positive know that you're probably not better off where you used to be and you're doing what's best for your kid that's right sure. Thank you. yeah if people would like to connect with you learn more about you where would they go um, so my Instagram is seafit living, S E E F I T and then living. And then I'm on Facebook, Samantha Lander or seafit or seafitpt.com. But Instagram is where I'm most active probably, or they can book a discovery call if they want to kind of get to see, you know, they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. They want to figure out why they can't reach their goals. They're sick of being tired all the time. Um, cause it's hard as a single mom. They want to get on that self-care bandwagon mm -hmm. it's really really important to take care of yourself even though you feel like it's selfish um i would book a free discovery call and we can talk all about it all right awesome i'll include everything in episode notes thank you so much for coming on sharing yeah. your story your lessons it was a pleasure to have you yeah thank you so much